Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And it is the morning after. Mm -hmm. The morning after Cartoon Network gets smashed. Uh, yep. Smashed into other divisions at Warner Brothers. Uh, lots of chatter about the future of Cartoon Network or the lack of a future for Cartoon Network. We're going to talk about this because now we've got uh, Cartoon Brew and some other animators chiming in on mm -hmm. it. And I'm, I just want to leave this here. A couple months ago, we did a video. Actually, we've done several videos saying that uh, David Zaslav was absolutely positively going to come for Cartoon Network. Yes, we've been saying it. It wasn't like we're just like, oh, you're grifters. We're not just latching onto something now just to try to get clicks. We've been saying it this entire time. Actually, if you go back, we've been saying it for about three years now because they were looking at, you know, consolidating their animation, as I understand it, before HBO Max even launched. That they were talking about just having one animation division at Warner that handled everything and then what they didn't, didn't do in-house, they would just outsource it or sell it off. Uh, the original plan, as I recall, was that Cartoon Network, Warner Brothers Animation, uh, Crunchyroll and Rooster Teeth were all mm -hmm. going to be merged into just like the animation tab on HBO Max and it didn't go as well as they'd hoped and then they wound up selling off Crunchyroll. Right. I still think they're going to wind up, before it's all said and done, selling off Rooster Teeth or shutting it down. But uh, here we are guys, this is kind of the end of Cartoon Network. You didn't see it coming, all the shuffles at the top, all the shows being canceled. Yes, I don't understand people um, didn't see it coming. We've Delma been telling you for a while. Uh, Velma not canceled, but uh, everybody's shocked, shocked, absolutely shocked. I mean, they, look, just endless reruns of Teen Titans Go, you know, um, I don't know what to tell you. It's, it shouldn't surprise anybody, but we're going to talk about it because mm -hmm. people are still surprised. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, over 277,000 subs finally. Another month to go up with that. Yeah, I know, right? What's going on? Like, our views are probably, fine. People like Warner Brothers are probably like, stop them. Stop they keep them, leaking YouTube. the shit. They keep telling everybody what's going to happen before it happens. Mm, they're going to make Kevin Smith cry again. Stop it. Uh, yeah, so let's talk about this. Cartoon Brew weighed in. I was kind of waiting for this one because we did the video yesterday talking about the layoffs at Warner. 26% uh, of their TV staff, and then they were merging Cartoon Network with Warner Brothers Animation and also merging animation with well, Unscripted. Yes, I was like, that's so weird. Um, but they're saying it's basically dead. Cartoon Network, as you know it, is gone. Thanks to David Zaslav. I think it's been gone. I think it's been going by degrees. But now it's sort of like, you know, you see in the movies where somebody's on their, their deathbed. They're like, I'm not dead yet. Oh, almost. Oh, you dead. No, no, no. I'm still here. I'm still here. And that's kind of what happened. But mm -hmm. when he started canceling all these shows, except for Velma, which I think was too far along in production, or that one probably no, would have got axed. let's be too. honest. The, Velma didn't get canceled because Velma... It uses diversity shields to not get canceled. Well, we're going to talk about that because remember how they said yesterday they were basically shutting down the uh, diversity workshop. The oh yeah, diversity... they, they had a shit fit about it. They had a shit fit, so they had to they had to walk it back within like two hours of announcing that that was going to be a, a casualty. Right, because that's it. If it has diversity, you're not allowed to touch it. Yeah. So again, coming from Cartoon Brew, probably the best publication out there that covers the day-to-day -day of the animation industry. And we're going to see some reactions here. People not happy, but I think they knew. They, uh, look, how could you not know this was... I think they I mean, hate us too, but that's okay. That's I don't <laughs> I don't hate them. I, no. I, you know, I mean, look, they're, they're knowledgeable. They've got insiders. They know what they're talking about. Uh, if they hate us, whatever. I, I'm sorry. Uh, however, the layoffs, which were expected... Yes. <laughs> yeah, we've been saying it. Don't tell the whole story of what's going on at Warner Brothers Discovery Animation. In fact, there was uh, an even more consequential announcement yesterday that fundamentally alters the structure of Cartoon Network Studios going forward and will have a far-reaching impact on projects it produces. The company calls it strategic realignment. <laughs> the company-wide memo, which we're not going to go through again, Channing Dungy, Dungay told staff that the company plans to fully consolidate its animation division, merging Warner Brothers Animation and Cartoon Network right. Studios. Uh, going forward, Sam Register will continue as the head of WBA and CNS, as well as Hanna-Barbera Studios Europe. Right, we talked about that yesterday. Right, which continue to, to, uh, continues to operate independently. Now, that's the one that I think is doing the Fosters reboot, is Hanna-Barbera. Okay. Uh, According to the memo, all three labels will continue to exist, but perhaps more in name than in action. 
Both development and production at WBA and CNS will now be merged, extending on the cross-studio teams that were already in place for programming, casting, legal, etc. That seems an ominous sign for the future of new original Cartoon Network animation. Mm -hmm. WBA has traditionally been a, uh, much more of a catalog IP driven studio. So they were the ones that did the, you know, the Bugs Bunny and the Scooby-Doo right, right. and the classic stuff. Then we had Hanna-Barbera, which was, you know, the, the classic stuff reimagined and some new stuff. And Cartoon Network was where you got your Steven Universe and, and mm -hmm. we're not going to get any more Steven Universe. Uh, Cartoon Network has been the studio that puts out original series under... Boss David Zaslav, Warner Brothers Discovery, has expressed a desire to focus more heavily on IP across all its businesses. So now the Cartoon Network has to share development and production with WBA. It's difficult to imagine a future in which the studio's original animation output can match what it has been in the past. Well, translation, he wants to produce profitable... I was going to say, things that actually people make money, you know. Yeah. And I mean, look, this is unfortunate because you're not going to find the new Scooby-Doo. You're not going to find the new even Teen Titans, which I know is based on a comic. But what's going to happen is they're going to go and they're just going to go back to the same well again and again and again. But Which is not necessarily a good thing. I want to make that clear. That's not a good thing. It's not because I mean some of the shows that we have gotten they list them have been really good shows. So it is it is it is not a good thing. Some of them have been colossal misfires though too. Right. But that's the thing when you're searching for the next big thing, you know, you might find a little flake of gold, a little speck of gold in the poop. Well, you usually say corn. Corn's not valuable like gold is. Oh. Well, it might be if we have a food shortage or something. It might be that people are fighting over corn. Um, I don't know. Anyway. Um, so anyway, yeah. Uh, <laughs> really bad analogy. But yeah, basically, you're going to have to dig through a lot of shit to find the nugget of corn or of gold. And that's what they've been doing. And there are some legitimately good shows, but there's also a lot of shit mm -hmm. that they put out over the last couple of years. They've greenlit shows that are like, what the hell were you thinking? And I'm, it almost feels like... Like King of Atlantis? Yeah, King of Atlantis. It almost feels like they just went out to Tumblr and they just like, you know, push the surprise me or whatever. Just just give me a blog, any blog with any t Tumblr cartoon. Yeah, that one looks good. Here, have a couple million dollars. Yeah. That one looks pretty good too. Have a couple million dollars. And you get a million dollars and you get a million dollars. Uh, over the last decade, Cartoon Network Studios produced shows such as Uncle Grandpa. That's one of the ones I'm, <laughs> I'm talking about. Like, what the hell, Uncle Grandpa? Steven Universe, Clarence, Over the Garden over Wall, the garden wall. We which Bear is Bears good. were actually not that bad. We Bear Bears is huge in Korea. It I guess, is. I guess it's like, it's just massive in Korea. It is. But it, see, it makes money. So that's why they're getting the spinoff, the preschool spinoff right. or whatever. Craig of the Creek, Summer Camp Island, Infinity Train, which it's I actually good. thought was good, but it didn't make money because... You couldn't really merch it, but I personally thought it was a very good show. And Primal, which was a very good show, yep. uh, just to name a few. Conversely, uh, Warner Brothers lineup has been focused on catalog characters, Bat Wheels, Bugs Bunny. These builders. are all going for little kids. Yeah, Aquaman, King of Atlantis, <laughs> Teen Titans Go, yeah, <laughs> the Animaniacs reboot, etc. Tom and Jerry, Harley Quinn, etc. The significance of yesterday's news may not have fully sunk in for a lot of animation fans. But those in the business immediately understood the magnitude of the news and the impact on Cartoon Network. By extension, Cartoon Network's future, uh, Brian Miller, former general manager of Cartoon Network and a key figurehead at the company for 21 years, tweeted a quote from Variety and uh, a grim two-word summary of what he thinks it means for the future. RIP Cartoon Network's We've news. been telling you. I just... We've been telling you. I'm just going to leave this here. Uh, that was just one. We had many before that. We've we have had many, 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 many. And look, this, my understanding from Warner Brothers people coming to us years ago was that the plan was to merge all this shit before HBO Max even launched. And Crunchyroll was actually going to be part of that. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, well, we can sell Crunchyroll because Sony's stupid enough to spend that much on it. So, um, and now it's actually happening. Now people are like, what? How is it possible? How is it possible that they don't want to burn more money on another, you know, Clarence? I, I don't understand. But what's sad is there's going to be some shows that would have maybe possibly been produced that would have been really good shows. Like, I mean, unfortunately for every, you know, Infinity Train, there's, you know, a bunch of Clarence. But, you know, some people like Clarence and that's okay if you do. But you know, they're going to lose out on some really good shows that could have been because of it. 
Yeah, well, this is this this sums it up nicely. When Warner Brothers Discovery has no fresh IP to reboot in 30 years and wonders why the Jetsons and the Flintstones aren't catching on with newly minted adults, who will they blame? Whoa, whoa, whoa. So, wait, 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 right, just right, this, wait, 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 wait. Why they aren't catching on with newly minted adults, but I thought they make these shows for children. I thought these were, you can't have an opinion on them because they're not for you, they're for kids. But this person's flat out saying when their shows don't resonate with people like me, who's a newly minted adult, you know, but, but I'm allowed to have an opinion on these shows because they're for children and newly minted adults, apparently. It, it says so much, but no, it, do, it does you know, beg the question, like if they're just going to keep going back to the same well and reinventing, you know, Flintstones, Jetsons, Scooby-Doo again and again and again, there's not going to be anything that's going to mean anything going forward. But I don't think there is a long term plan. I'll tell you, I, I think Zaslav's plan is to. Trim the fat off of Warner Brothers Discovery and then sell it. He says, we're not for sale. Today, five years from now, they might decide, well, we'll just sell the Warner Brothers catalog to Netflix or mm -hmm. Apple or something. I'm just, sorry, I just can't get past that. Well, this okay, so this is kind of the mentality of a lot of animation fans now. It's like, yeah, all these cartoons, they're for like 20-somethings. It's like, yes, exactly. Well, we've been saying this. When we say it, it's like, yeah, it's for children. Sheer is for children. I'm like, yes, yes. Uh, all these uh, nine and ten year old girls understand, uh, you know, gender studies and all that. They're shit. trying to make sure they do. Yeah. Um, they're, they're I like this. Even Disney's originals tries new. Disney occasionally tries new originals. Warner Discovery should take a page from the real emperor of IP. Disney hasn't been the emperor of IP for years. Most of their shit is just the same thing you're complaining about here, where they're just taking like things they already have and just regurgitating them into something else. They haven't been developing much for a long time. No, I mean, they're probably because it's like, oh, we got Owl House. I'm like, yeah, Owl House got canceled, didn't it? Um, it got canceled. And I, I, yeah, I think a lot of it just comes down to money. The stuff's expensive. They can't afford to take a chance on developing new shit because they're going to sink millions of dollars into it. And it's going to be a flop. Whereas they know they can just, you know, shove another Scooby-Doo movie out on Blu-ray and people are going to buy it. But what, what the sad thing is, is the things they keep banking on were things that were developed in a time when people just made new things. Yeah. And then like even and even when they reboot old IP, they usually screw it up and never learn. Yes, it's yes, it's very true. Oh, God. This is why I hate David Zaslav now. He's become a total menace to Warner Brothers and Cartoon Network. This is it. Now it matters. This is what I'm seeing on Twitter, too. Like, nobody really batted an eye when he was cutting. Well, they were mad about Batgirl or whatever. But let's face it, most people weren't going to go see the movie. Oh, no. He's cutting comics. Oh, we don't really care about that. Oh, CW shows? Oh, that's a shame. That's a real shame. But Cartoon Network? What are us young 20 newly minted adults going to do? What are we going to do now? I mean, it's for the children. We're going to have to go back to... Oh, we're going to do a change.org like that works. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, um, they, they haven't, they, uh, let's see. Yeah, because they've been doing anything in the last decade worth watching. They haven't been. That's that's true. Zaslav is, is a numbers guy and Cartoon Network doesn't perform. It doesn't. It doesn't. I mean, look, uh, Cartoon Network at its peak existed in another time. We've mm -hmm. done videos before. You go back. We have... We have three or 4,000 videos we've done in the last like four or five years, guys. You can see that kids aren't watching Cartoon Network no. anymore. They're not watching Disney Channel or Disney XD anymore. Um, yeah, we've even had like the numbers, the breakdown of numbers of what they're watching. And those were not the places they were going. No, the, a lot of stuff they're watching is on uh, streaming services or whatever. And they got to look at this like, can we really afford to spend... 500,000 to a million plus an episode on a show that isn't merchandisable, the kids aren't actually watching. Now, back in the day, it was either you watched Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, or Disney Channel, and they had the ad money rolling in, they had the eyeballs, they could command, you know, so it was worth it to put shows on there, even if they didn't have the merchandise angle down, because it's like, well, we're still going to get ad revenue, you know? So we can throw something like Uncle Grandpa, we can take a chance on that, because... Kids are going to they're going to watch it in between other shows and we got the ad revenue coming in. And um, yeah, you know, and every once in a while they get a hit. They get an Adventure Time. It's debatable about Steven Universe. They tried to merchandise Steven Universe and the toys were on clearance. I swear to God, within like two months. Yeah. Well, so they're doubling down little kid shows because that's what it's about. But I mean, look, you're exactly like, well, Clownfish is happy. It's like, no, I, no, I, I, I want to see creative shows come back. That's what we ultimately want. We don't want the rebooted IP bullshit over and over again. But I do find it very entertaining that the people that are yelling about it's for children are the ones basically admitting that it was for them the whole time. 
Yeah, pretty much. That's why I said this is like this sums it up nicely because it's like basically young adults are angry that uh, it's not happening. We're living in the wrong timeline. All these shows, all these adults angry about these shows that didn't resonate with kids. They're like, hey, the Flintstones and the Jetsons aren't going to resonate with children. I'm like, I'm sorry. Uh, regular show. I don't. I, and I love I like regular show. Our kids like regular show, though. But I'm saying, for the most part, for most kids, unless it's freaking SpongeBob or Teen Titans Go, SpongeBob on which is pretty much keeping Nick on the air, but can be you can make merchandise of it. You know? well, that's why I like like Gravity Falls so much, and I think Over the Garden Wall. A couple of those are so great because they they did resonate with everyone, and I think that they need more shows like that. But they need to do new things. And I think banking on IP is boring. It's tired, and you know what? Do you, yeah, what are you going to do in twenty years when you you you, you don't have anything to reboot because you already re, you know rebooted them five times? It's just it's dumb. So this is this is what gets me too. People really like I see all these people on Twitter, and they're they're teenagers or young adults or whatever, and they're like animation. newly minted adults, newly That's minted adults, it. and they're like you know animation should should mean more. It should be held to a higher standard. It's art for art's sake. I'm like. Someone has to pay for Somebody it. Somebody has to pay for it. And I'm sorry, that's the reality of it. If you look at the story of Disney, their first five movies were art. And they almost went bankrupt uh, trying to bankroll well, these they, movies. They did and, the ones they wanted to do, but they had to do ones that are bankable at the same time. Yeah. And and you know, basically to get the stuff that you love. So like a show like Infinity Train, which is just something the creator wanted uh, to do because he wanted to tell that story. You know, gets to be made because a lot of people watch Teen Titans Go and they were allocating money to Cartoon Network for new shows trying to find another Teen Titans Go. Now, common sense could tell you that something like Infinity Train, which again, not to knock the quality, I think it's a good show, wasn't going to perform like a Teen Titans Go or yeah. a SpongeBob or whatever. But I don't think they realize that, like, well, we can't make any money even off of merchandise. We can't sell shit for this show. So, and eh, just pull it all down, pretend it doesn't exist, and we'll just outsource it someplace else. So he is strictly a numbers guy. I mean, that's it. And this is a <laughs> rude like, awakening. I hate to break it, everyone, but Cartoon Network has been dead for over a decade now. Yes. And it became the Teen yes. Titans Go channel. I mean, Boomerang had more going on than CN at this point, And they're not wrong. That Yeah. I mean, it is. It's, it's been gone for a long time now. The last gasp of... You know, popularity was probably Adventure Time, and we could argue Steven Universe. I I don't know really what the numbers for Steven Universe were. The person, Cartoon Network Studios no longer has any independent say on either creative or operational matters. Good. CN has produced a steady stream of trash fueled by nepotism hires for years. It hasn't been the CN that people loved in a long, long time. Rest in piss. <laughs> <laughs> Rest in piss. Rest in piss. I'm sorry. That's funny. Um. So the last time Cartoon Network was Cartoon Network, or at least Han Barbera was Han Barbera, I think was was when uh, Fred Fred Seibert was in charge, and that was a long time ago. That's when we got a lot of these new shows, and we got uh, no, they're they're right. I mean, Cartoon Network has been dying. It's just this is this is the last gasp. The plug is being pulled. Basically, I think when they have shows that are universal shows that are that are that are not agenda driven. And they resonate with a lot of people because they're funny and they can appeal to adults and children like, like, you know, Gravity Falls or Infinity Train or those kind of shows, uh, Owl House or whatever. I think they do well. It's when they double, well, even Owl House can argue. It's when they double, triple down on these like, you know, niche type things Yeah. that I think it becomes a problem. And it's gotten to a place where it's more about who you are than what your story is. And that is changing. Now, th this person, an animation on HBO Max said, you know, that they do have shows in development. We talked about this yesterday. It, they're going to use the brand. But I mean, Cartoon Network, as it was before, where it was basically, they were constantly producing new shows. You're getting new stuff at the time, like Powerpuff Girls and Dexter's Lab and Johnny Bravo and even freaking Cow and Chicken, whatever. Those days are gone, but as other people pointed out, it's it's been over for a while. You know, they've got a freaking revolving door at the top. Basically, it's whoever can push the button and run more Teen Titans Go. Well, now that there's other places like I read all the, the the original news on Variety and Deadline, and not Cartoon Brew, because they're just trying to scare people. Cartoon Brew is, I'm guess they are they have their finger on the pulse of the animation industry more than Variety. I don't think they even caught Variety caught how bad this is going to be. And when they've got somebody who used to run the damn network saying RIP Cartoon Network, this is, this is, yeah, it's going to be a brand. It'll be like a cartoon, kind of like Hanna-Barbera for, for a long time became kind of a brand. Like we've got, you know, Jetsons and Flintstones shit with a cartoon, 
you know, our Hanna Barbera logo on it. It's another case of we love you when you we agree with you, but we hate you when we don't. Yeah, pretty much. So, anyway, we can wrap this up. Yeah, we're gonna wrap it up. Um, but uh, there you go, guys. So we'll see what happens. Things are definitely gonna change. How severe those changes are gonna be, it's up for debate. I um, real quick though, this. I work there. You can stand by whatever you'd like, but you're sensationalizing it and guiding people to ex ex extrapolate that CNS is basically dead is really shitty. Especially for those that are still a job there. Do better. How? If you're not now, you're gonna be. Yeah, it's gonna be really interesting to see where uh, uh, Wolf and Sheeps is in six months. Yeah. You know. So it, anyway. Anyway, we're gonna wrap it up. Yep. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.